Good morning, you guys. I'm on my morning walk. I'm taking you with me. It's around my favorite place to take a walk, the Sepulveda Basin. It's an awesome place up by my apartment in the valley. It's usually pretty quiet with a little bit of the freeway in the background, but there's just all kinds of animals and, and different creatures that you don't normally see hanging out in LA, but they're hanging out in the Sepulveda Basin. And it's awesome to see God's creation in action. Yeah. I love going for walks. I love exercising. God put our heart like right in the middle of our bodies and, and made it to pump. And not just pump a little bit, he made it to really pump. So when we exercise, it just makes our whole body and brain and every part of our bodies just, just feel alive. Same thing happens when we dig into the Bible or, or we have a Bible lesson or we, or we pray for a while or we talk to God or ask questions of our parents about God or, or talk to our leaders. That works our hearts out too and it makes our whole spirit come alive. I know it's pretty crazy to be meeting this way on a Sunday morning. There's this virus going around that can make people real sick, like older people and people who are already sick with other issues. This virus is not good for them to get. So we're gonna be meeting online for a while to try to stop the spread. Thank you, Jesus, for the internet. You guys are always welcome to call me and talk to me or FaceTime me or ask your parents to text me for you. Now, I don't want you to stay scared if you're scared with all this, though. If you feel like you're getting worried, just close your eyes and think of something awesome like your last birthday party. And then say a quick prayer, Jesus, please help me to remember that you're there. Amen. Westside Vineyard Kids Church Online is going to be sweet. Is it going to be as sweet as in-person Kids Church? Nah, nothing's as sweet as being together. Or it's always better being together. But it will be pretty sweet. So before we get going on our lesson, we're going to um, get a worship song. we got some friends on here that are going to show you the moves. And I encourage you and your family to learn these moves with this song. Make your own video and then uh, record it. You can tag us. You can post it on your parents' social media or ask your parents to post it on their social media. And then you can tag us at Westside Vine LA. All right, love you guys. Here's worship. Everything I want, everything I need, you are.
It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 11 through 24. All right, guys, it's time for the Bible. And remember, all month long, we've been talking about forgiveness. And forgiveness is deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. So when somebody does something mean to you, we don't do something back. We forgive them. And I'm excited to tell you an amazing story of forgiveness that we can find right in the Bible. And this is actually a story that Jesus told in order to help people understand something important. And we call those parables. Let me explain what was happening around that time. Everywhere Jesus went, there were always crowds of people who followed him. Often he would heal their sicknesses, but he was more interested in healing their hearts. Blessed are those who hear God's word and obey it. So important religious leaders came to hear Jesus, but other people did too. Moms and dads, shopkeepers and tax collectors, misfits and other people who did wrong things. The last will be first and the first will be last. The religious leaders were upset that Jesus chose to invite and include everyone. He hangs out with sinners and even like eats with them. Jesus knew the hearts of the religious leaders. They believed that keeping the rules kept them closer to God than anyone else. So Jesus told them a story, a parable. There was a man who had two sons. Now, if Jesus were telling the story today, it might go a little something like this. There are two brothers. Older brother is Will, and the younger brother is Jake. These guys were just a little bit different than each other. Father, I finished planting the barley field, cleaned out the cow stalls, and fed the goats. All before breakfast? All before breakfast. Where's your brother? In bed. Jake, come get some breakfast. Uh, is it noon yet? I'm not getting up before noon. I need you to help your brother rebuild the shed. Don't we have servants to do that? Uh, I'm tired of people telling me what to do. I want to be in charge. As Jake considered, he realized that one day, when his father was gone, he and his older brother would split all the money, and he would be kind of like half in charge. Why wait? Just take my share now. After breakfast, Jake found his father examining the damaged shed. I want my share of your money. You'll get it. One day. Nope. I want it all right now. The father studied Jake with sadness in his eyes. Then he decided to let Jake learn the hard way. All right. You can have your share. Woo woo! So Jake took half of his property in cash and took off to travel the world on his own terms. So long, suckers! After days of travel, Jake finally arrived in a country where the sun was warm, the breeze was cool, and the lake water was as smooth as glass. Ah, this is the life. Jake rented a lakefront villa. Dude ate whatever he wanted. Pizza for breakfast, Twinkies for lunch, ooh, ice cream for dinner. <laughs> He threw huge parties and gave away lavish gifts. Oh, Jake, you're like so amazing. Wow, is this the new SolarWare 2020 gaming system? Oh, you can have it. I'll get another. <laughs> Dude, you are the best. But soon, a famine swept the land. Food ran low. Huh. All I've got is ramen. I better go to the store. Jake checked his money pouch. It was nearly empty. Two pennies? But I had so much. Hey, uh, anyone have an extra PB and J? Um, like, no. Don't bug us. Jake had nothing left. At last, he was forced to work for a farmer, taking care of the pigs. So we Hey, pig, 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 pig. Jake was so hungry. Even the disgusting food scraps for the pigs looked good. 
the crust is the best part of the sandwich, right? Or this? Don't you touch that there banana peel. It's for the pigs. <laughs> this is so not kosher. As Jake crouched down in that miserable mud with those pigs, he couldn't help but think of home. My father's servants have more than enough to eat, and here I am practically dying of hunger. <laughs> I should go home. I will go home. I'll say, um, Father, I have sinned against heaven, and I have sinned against you. I'm no longer fit to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Yeah, that's good, right? Jake got right up and headed home. The journey took a lot longer on foot, and he was weak with hunger. Sinned against heaven, sinned against you, I'm no longer worthy. At last, Jake reached his hometown. Nobody even recognized him as he shuffled down the road, dusty and ragged. I'll just sneak into the house the back way. But as Jake neared his home, he noticed someone standing on the porch. I really hope that's not Will. In an instant, the figure on the porch leapt down and began to run. The man raced down the walk and flung open the gate. Wait, that's... it's Dad! Jake's father ran along the dusty road towards his son. Dad, I... My son! The father threw his arms around Jake and kissed him. Mwah. Jake swallowed hard, and he stepped back. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I, I'm no longer fit to be called your son. But Jake's father was too full of laughter and tears to hear about any of this. Instead, he hugged his son again, and he led him back into the house, calling for the servants. Quick, uh, bring the best robe and put it on him. Uh, put a ring on his finger, sandals on his feet. Bring the fattest calf and kill it, and let's have a feast and celebrate. This son of mine was dead, and now he is alive again. He was lost, and now he is found. Wow, Dad, I, I don't deserve any of this. I don't know what to say except thank you. So the father had freely forgiven the younger son, but the story wasn't over yet, because Jake's older brother, Will, remember him? Well, he was out in the field finishing up another hard day of work. And when he gets back, he turns out to be far less forgiving. You guys, God is like the father in this story. When we mess up and break the rules or we don't make wise choices or, or we don't treat others the way we want to be treated, God is always ready to welcome us back the minute we turn back to him. Our sins, our stains, they're cleaned right up. Here's the one big story. In the beginning, God had this perfect relationship with the people he created. Then, people broke God's rules, which broke the relationship with God. Things got real messy for hundreds of years, but God had a plan to clean things up. God sent his son Jesus to give his life to pay for our sins, and because of that, every one of us can be forgiven, and it's every one of us who needs forgiveness. You may not have run away from home and wasted a fortune partying like the younger son, but each one of us has done things that hurts our relationship with God. From sneaking an answer off of a neighbor's test paper to telling your mom and dad you finished your homework when you were really playing a game. The amazing news is that when you believe in Jesus, God cleans away all the wrong things we've done. Just like that. So here's the one thing to remember. Everyone needs to be forgiven. You, me, your parents, my parents, everyone. We're going to make a mess from time to time. Some more than others. But the awesome thing to remember is that we have a loving, forgiving father who is always waiting for us with open arms. You guys, everyone needs to be forgiven. And our verse this month says the same thing. Put up with one another. Forgive one another if you are holding something against someone. Forgive, just as the Lord forgave you. You guys, God forgives us, and he does it over and over and over. So let's let that be our encouragement for us to do the same. Love you guys. See you soon.